welcome on this very special day, not only Remembrance Sunday, but a great tribute to many game shows. One, I was in the game show in 1960, and the London game show, 1966 and 1967. I was four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and we didn't have the luxury of having, well, all, I mean, girls. <laughs> I'd still been in it if they had girls. And it's wonderful to see everyone backstage. I don't know if anyone, did anyone here in the audience go to see them one of the old game shows, 1966, with a young kid in it, in the program called Cameron Davidson? That was me. That's my name, Cameron. I'm sort of, my father was some Scottish soldiers. I remember being in the wings, I was 12 years of, 11 years of age, and I had to come out and do these impressions and things like that. I used to say, well, they've asked me to come on and introduce something, but I, I can't, I, I don't know what to say. So I asked some of my friends in show business, all at 11, with hipsters, <laughs> and doing impressions of Ralph Reader at the end, the great man Ralph Reader. I mean, if he was alive today, he'd be dead proud to see all this stuff. I mean, and what has to be said, ladies and gentlemen, this has all been done in a day. Jack, the director and the team have been working very, very hard with the boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen backstage here. And it is worth a big round of applause for what you're about to see. They've been working on all day. I'll tell you how I got started, just briefly, I won't keep you too long because everyone's anxious to get going and I'm not getting the pub. <laughs> uh, my father, um, rest his soul, took me on holiday fishing up to a place called uh, Norfolk, Great Yarn. Great Yarn. If anyone go and have a few pints, I'll well, do Great Yarn. <laughs> and I sat in outside fishing of 10 years of age and my dad bumped into these people who had a boat. And they didn't seem like millionaires to us because we had a tent. They also had half a bottle of whiskey, so my dad became a mate with them for life. <laughs> And he started getting me showing off doing these various impressions and they said, are you in the scouts? I said, yeah, of course. Would you like to be in the gang show? About <gasps> being a film star. So I went off to the London Palladium and did an audition for the great man Ralph Reader and I became a member of 1966 gang show. And then the most terrifying thing in my whole career, even up to now, happened. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, Muppets. <laughs> This is the cleanest I've ever been on stage. <laughs> <laughs> the most terrifying thing that any other members of the game show around that time will tell you was Bert the Makeup Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was these huge big lines of people all waiting to get their makeup done by the various people who did the makeup. And there was three kids about this big in Bert's line. Because you go in there looking like young and special, you come out looking like something from the Mikado. <laughs> a little Chinese waiter. I tell you, the kids up here, the ladies and gentlemen up here, if they have any, if they do anything like me, they'll remember this night and they'll remember every game show thing they do for the rest of their life. Because it not only is the Scout Movement a great organisation and teaches kids how to become you know, proper adults with morals and uh, a sense of duty. <laughs> Clean living. <laughs> Sober people. <laughs> Could have abandoned me. <laughs> but it is a great night, and I still know all, this, all the words from all the old songs when you're marching on. And it is a great tradition. You're going to have a wonderful, wonderful night here. This is how it all started in 1932. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>
to see you. Thank you very much, Don. That's the only pit that's still open in this country now. <laughs> No, it's easy and chubby oats, my name is. I'm not making a comeback because I've not been anywhere, really. <laughs> not since the Bermondsey Gage. I mean, that would be... Yeah! I have a blooming good day, Bermondsey. Bermondsey, anyway, it wasn't there, you know. I went there the other day, all down Jamaica Road. All the shops are boarded up. The local window cleaners bought a sand <laughs> to many people since I saw them at Tabbridge Court when I came in their rates. <laughs> you were late in that box, I gather. Was that right? The royal party, you were late, were you? Yeah. Talk to me! Yeah. Traffic. Traffic, was it? These other people, the poor people, got it in time. <laughs> if you'd have been walking like that, you wouldn't have been late. <laughs> Jolly good to see you tonight, I tell you. It's very nice to see you, because I've had any troubles. I've been too well, I've uh, uh, <laughs> no, I've lost my driving license since I moved from Burnley. Because we sold our house in Fort Road. Cool, wait till the council find out. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a detached house now. We don't detax like it's coming away from the rest of the territory. <laughs> But you see, I've got a bit flash and I've got the car, I mean, I've got this Reliant Robin. <laughs> Very good car, Reliant Robin. Yeah. Leasing your curb crawling, you only stuck one tire. <laughs> I drive over the blooming thing, I tell you what, I've had a few, I've had one or two, I mean, I've been in the end, I've had one or two, three times. It was amazing how you do that, because you meet old friends. When you come back to London, there's one old boy coming to the pub, he said, I can't have been at Ridge. The government said, we don't often see you in here. He said, no, I'm 62 today. He said, well, have another whiskey on the house. Will we see you tomorrow? He said, no, I'm 2 to 10. <laughs> I had a pork pie in here. I said to the government, there's a worm in this. He said, that's fat. I said, it should be. It's all to me. <laughs>
then he put his head through the window. Therefore, we put a time on him. He's only sniffed round the car. Now, they teach him to do that, and the police got his car to him. You think so? Oh, I mean, you think so? Then he must have got a whiff. Of the drink. <laughs> oh, he said, all oh, sarcastic. Oh, been having a drink, have we, sir? I said, if we have, I don't remember you getting your gun. <laughs> I said, please don't hit me again, officer. <laughs> That's how I lost my driving license. <laughs> and had to walk in. That's why I got here on time. <laughs> you know what happens to the idle? It's blooming nice to have come down and seen everyone tonight. I'll tell you, really, as you got the suit, I'll put this special to most. Unexpected gift from the wife, this suit was. Got home unusually early the other night and it was laid over a chair in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, you know. I remember like the, the old days, like, you know, when, when you did like, when, when scouting was very important, because like, you know, it was well connected with the church and, and the, the vicar had no chance unless he got on. With the scout group. <laughs> Nothing would be done. The choir wouldn't be augmented. The gardens wouldn't be done. Then a new vicar come to the local church and he thought he'd get to know him, like, you know, so he took the scouters in the local pub. <laughs> as you would. <laughs> and he's trying to get to know him, but they won't have him on talking at all. Didn't want to know him. And he was chatting away. Hell yeah. Laughing as he was scouting jacket. And I didn't give a mind. Had a few pints off him. <laughs> then he went out in the gents. And he'd come back. And the ASM has said, because you know what an ASM is, don't you? What enthusiasm ends with. And <laughs> ASM said, have a drink with me, nigga. And the group scout master said, now have a drink with me. And our Kayla said, now I'll get these. And he said, well, that's amazing. He said, why is it that nobody had speech room for them? Now you're all so friendly. And they said, well, the group was like this. We watched you come in here. We thought, foreigner, don't know you. Then we watched you have a couple of pints. We watched you never out and get out to the gents. Now, when you was in the gents, you must have seen the poem. And you must have seen the big picture of Eve over trap free. <laughs> You must have noticed her well-rounded features and that fig leaf what she's got strategically placed. Well, the vicar said, yes, I did. And he said, well, when, when you lifted up that fig leaf, all the lights in here flashed, and we knew you were one of us.
Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Are you lost? No, no, I'm not lost, Captain. I know I saw your car park just down by the side of the road. As I was cycling by, I thought I saw someone standing here. I was just taking a look around, that's all. You've been here before, sir? Oh, yes. A long time ago. You know, I was just coming back from the town and the lights of the car picked up a signpost. And when I saw the name of the village, well, I just couldn't help but coming and taking a look around. Not, not much going on around here these days, sir. Desolate it is. The only thing we get around here is owls. The noise they make at night, oh, it's something fierce. Yes, they always did make a lot of noise, the owls. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about them when you came up. Would you like a cigarette? Don't go much of myself, sir. Still, every man to his taste. That's a nice lighter you've got there, sir. Yes, it, it, it was a present. A present from the owls. Well, I'll just be off to check out on the old farm, sir. I might see you on the way back. You yes. just make yourself at home. Okay, Constable, but I am home. Hey, you lot. Any of you seen Johnson? He's supposed to be on duty, <coughs> Tom. They've all gone out somewhere. If they're always out. I'll skip one after you, man. What time's dinner? How am I supposed to know? I'm not on duty, Tom. It's them owls. I'm starving. I'm always starving. Maybe I've got a tapeworm. Don't be so conceited. Hey, I I've come back from the post office. There's a smashy girl down there. Do you know something, Timber? You suffer from a one-track mind. Bradley! Where do you think you're going? Uh, I was just going to take a walk down to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> you get yourself in the uniform. You're not leaving this campsite unless you're properly dressed. Coo! Love a duck. <laughs> All this talk about getting married, building up a home, and settling down, and you don't even have a chance to practice. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. There's a letter for you. Quick, you remember? Hey! Now listen, some of you lot might have to help get dinner ready, because the hours gone out and left us lot short-handed. <coughs> What's the matter, Jimmy? Bad news? Yeah, ain't it awful? She ain't sent me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you get to it, Tommy, you get the spice room. Don't blame me. Take it out on their house and they get back. Blow the drinking house. I vote give them a rough house. Always blinking, well dodging the hard work. Come on, you two, you heard what the foreman said. Blooming slaves. That's what we are. And this is supposed to be a holiday. Just imagine. We have to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say, Skip. We're duty patrol, and we shouldn't have gone out. Dinner's going to be late, and we're always the cause of all the trouble in the troop. And we're a pain in the neck. But happy birthday. You thought we didn't know, didn't you? Well, we did. We don't hold you up. We think it's 107. <laughs> don't be disrespectful. We don't look a day over 90. Go on, give him the bloody finger. Let's go with the spuds. 
from your devoted brats, the owls. Accept this as a token of what we think of you. And we hope to be annoying you for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Gee, Skip, I bet you didn't think I was going to be a sailor, did you? I had a smashing time in the Navy. I was on the best ship in the old fleet. I wish you could have seen her, Skip. She was great. There'll never be another Prince of Wales. And what about me, Skipper? Remember the first time I came home on leave? After getting my wings? Remember that time I flew right over your house? And that night, we went out on a binge together. That was my last party before I went down. Over Hamburg. I didn't make you down either, Skip. That old pale bud you gave me, it's still with me. Oh, me. You loaned me that lighter once. When I was home on leave. But I gave it back to you. And yet, I bet you got it. The last letter I ever wrote was to you. From Singapore. I hope a lot of the others got back from Dunkirk, Skip. What a rum bunch of blokes the owls turned out to be. Come on, you mugs. Let's get cracking with the dinner, or he'll forget it's his birthday and start bawling us out again. Come on! <coughs>
Oh. No, Brenda, Cohen. Really? I'm so pleased with that. It'd be quicker for you to get home. <laughs> Love it, Sue. Now, let's see what we're with now. I've got to apologise because Ian Ed Love was unable to make it tonight, so I've managed to jump in quickly for him to introduce the RAF Gang Show. I don't have to tell you about the Scout Gang Show because you know all about it, or the majority of you do. If not, you can be in your programme. If you haven't got a program, you're unlucky because they've sold out. <laughs> well, we can laugh against ourselves, we might as well. And finish building it for us. No, you see, what we are carrying on the show, in, in, in the Raf Gang show, there's all sorts of talents. I don't know if you realise those would be the Sanders, Tony Hancock, Dick Henry, do you remember Red Diction? Yes. Confidentially, I like to talk confidentially. We are like you, There's a few old boys, lovely, lovely people that used to be in the ground in the show with variety in the musical. Now I'm going to introduce you another gentleman, one of our great speciality acts. In fact, the only one over to America this year and won the World Championship for Road Spinning. So let's have a warm welcome, please, to Rex Robar. <laughs>
week in the afternoon, over all over the world ever since. I mean, I'll tell you what, it was in the Afghan show doing that, and it's very difficult on the town train for Spitfire. <laughs> As a press office, I didn't usually know one of the great comics of the Afghan show. I did it was a great Dane comic, and uh, the manager here will be upset because he's playing down the road at Bromley for this Christmas with Jimmy Carbuck in that I'm sure you're going to give him a lovely welcome from the Rive Grand Joey's Joe Black! Don't, don't you meet some funny people today? I mean, not like me, funny. <laughs> I came down from the West End by two today, sat opposite me with a chap that I dare not look at. Have you ever sat in a train with somebody sat in front of you that you dare not look at? You wait to look at, out of the carriage window, then you look at them, and then they'll look at you and go, This chap in front of me, you'll never believe me, got a pigeon on this shoulder, pigeon on this shoulder, pigeon on his head. I thought he's coming here, it's Paul Daniels. Three days, ten o'clock, it's a box. <laughs> We got on the train together. I said, excuse me. I said, I don't think I'm being rude, but the three pigeons, are they trained? He said, I don't know. I got into the farm square. <laughs> My wife said to me, she said, I want to go on a cruise. I said, I don't want. She said, a cruise. I said, how long for? She said, three months. I said, three months at sea. She said, three months at sea. I thought, oh, I'd better go see the chemist. <laughs> So I waited till I was empty. I said, excuse me, Mr. Kenny, says, I'm taking my wife on a three months cruise. He said, I hope he keeps fine for you. <coughs> Why are you telling me that? I said, because it's obvious, is it? I want a packet of... <laughs> he said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, I don't look about, I usually go to the barbers. He said, you just want one packet? He said, of course, I'm only with for three months. <laughs> Don't anything else? I said, yes, I'd like a, a hundred out to six tablets. He says, you want one packet of blood and a hundred hand sick tablets? So that's right. He says, well, if it makes you sick, why do you do it? <laughs> I'll never forget the first time that I came to London. I thought, I must see where the Queen lives. And I got on the train at King's Cross, saw a policeman. I said, excuse me, policeman. I said, I've never been to London before. Could you tell me where I can find a young lady to take out? He said, I know where bloody places. They get on the other ground, travel along, about four stops, get out of Piccadilly. You can't miss it, there's a circus there. <laughs> he says, it'll be all right then. So I got on the other ground and I fell asleep. When I woke up, it wasn't Piccadilly, it was Waterloo. So I got up the train, I had a look where the battle was. <laughs> I walked in. And I went into a small lovely girl, took her to the pictures, then we had some supper. I says, now where can we go? She says, come back to the flat. I says, why is it raining? <laughs> come on, back to the flat we went. Oh, it's so much fun, so much, so much excitement is what comics. <laughs> and I could hear a knock on the door. I says, who's that? She says, that's my husband. <laughs> what can I do? She says, jump out the flat window. I says, there's 13 stories. She says, no time to superstitious. <laughs> No, Francis was sat at the table, sitting around with the electric light, and he comes in, I say, you're the electricity, you've got to fix the globe. I said, like this, he said, well, put your hat on. <laughs> I stood on the table, and I was sitting with the electric light, and then he walked in, and he looked straight at me. He said, I thought I told you to get out of Piccadilly. <laughs> <laughs>
Caldew do? <laughs> My name's Caldew Robinson, the parents of the same name. And I would say how wonderful it is to be addressing a live audience again after two nights in Morecambe. <laughs> Morecambe, an extraordinary town, Morecambe. It hasn't got any twinning arrangements, got a suicide pack of Grimsby. <laughs> I, hope you like, I hope you like the demob suit, it's wearing well. I'm very happy here. I managed to park my car, find a place to park the car just outside Swindon. <laughs> I'm really a little bit nervous tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't know why I have the nostalgia. I feel as nervous as Solomon Rush, the This Is Your Life. <laughs> they tell me Solomon Rush is going to join a first division football club soon. Not much good on the field, really playing, but they'll put 10 million on the gate. <laughs> Good football joke, man. But it is <laughs> marvellous to me that he's sort of here, back with the raft, back with the gang show, takes me back, just like the general really red arm band used to after every leave. <laughs> so, many, so many memories come flooding back. First time I ever met the Sierra, I banged on the door, a child boy, she come in! I went in, he looked up to that some tea, and said, thank you, not too much, children. <laughs> I forget the first time we were given our guard duty instructions by a charming little pilot officer with a slight stammer. He said, this is war, what you, what you, what you do, chaps? You wait there with your, with your, with your gun. <laughs> you hear somebody coming, you say, hold your gun, hold your gun, hold your gun. Goes out. If they don't reply at once, he said, you say, whoa. <laughs> once more, hold your gun, goes out. If they still don't reply, he said, you say, whoa. Once more, who goes in? They don't reply, they say, you burn, you burn, you fire. <laughs> don't fire too quick, so it might bloody well be me. <laughs> and finally, another happy memory. We had some sergeant majors on our camp. We were very democratic. <laughs> When they started to manage her, there was a lady of very easy virtue taking up residence near the camp. They went rushing down one day, he knocked on the door, she came over and said, Shoot me! I understand that you are the lady of easy virtue! <laughs> Man. <laughs> she said, yeah, that's a fair description of the trade description. Dad, yes. He said, what would you charge me for the pleasure of my company? Oh, she said, about five pounds. He said, very reasonable. Company, by the left, Thank you very much, I'm going to talk to you all night, you know you laugh. <laughs> Before I go, a little bit of news. They've decided what to do about the mines, they're going to send a cabinet down there. <laughs>
tonight, marvellous. No, no, it's lovely to see it. Isn't it marvellous to see that the old pro is coming in and working for it? Don't you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Are you enjoying yourselves? Yeah. This is better than television, isn't it? Yeah. yeah you're right, you can't turn us off here. Ladies and gentlemen, because we made your impression how to introduce the young man, how far was you tonight to introduce young talent as Jim Davis has brought Deathly Fight for? And tonight is no exception. We're going to introduce a young man. I'm certain he's going to climb the scale of in the entertainment world and be a wonderful, wonderful vocalist before God. In fact, he's a wonderful vocalist now, but what I meant is a star before God. So I'm certain you've enjoyed a lovely talent and a wonderful young man. He's on that line of the ladder, and perhaps he's up two or three by now. All welcome, please, for Drew Miller. nice to take this opportunity for me and the orchestra to have a little bit of fun here this evening. And I don't remember rehearsals, we weren't messing around with uh, like a busking type of thing. Uh, Andy, sir, do you remember when I, I sort of started it off by going pst, 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 pst. Lovely. And Jeff, sir, you came in on the bass guitar there. And then Terry joined us with some chords on the guitar. Join us with the percussion. And then the boss, Sir John Sherman. Love it. Gentlemen on the horn section, you must join us. She cries all 
tell you what, Tom, I'll sing, you play.
Animal Scouts of the Royal Elton Gang Show. So I hope for any help for that. Especially young, said, please don't try. <laughs> Honestly, it was just, it can be very dangerous. The man who taught him is one of the professionals who used to work that kind of act when he was working a few years ago. They've been highly trained, so please don't try it, will you? Because you might do yourself an in mischief for real. <laughs> As you just been trying, President, I introduced one of our great comedians, a gentleman who's been around with everything. And he did work, work with Ralph a few years ago, and in one of the tour shows, he, 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 he took his place as well. So I'm sure you can enjoy the wonderful talents of Don Smoothie. Everybody here is a friend or attached to Ralph in one way or another. And none more so the gentleman I'm introducing now, a man you've all loved, met, and seen, and heard for many, many moons. He doesn't like me saying all this because you remember when he can't do his badge? Yes. He was with that. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's silly for me to keep on talking about him because you know what he does. You're going to meet him. It's Russ Conway. The end of 1942, I think it was the end of 42, maybe beginning of 43, I joined the Royal Navy and I was sent home after two months of my first week's leave. So I went back to my hometown of Bristol, which is where I was born, my hometown, where they thought like that. <laughs> and my aging auntie as she was then. She stopped aging about eight years ago. She said, she said, Trevor? I said, what? Trevor is my name. You see, you're not allowed to call me that. You have to call me Russ. But she said, Trevor, what you've got to do is go down to the local cinema and see a film what is on there and what has the most beautiful tune we've ever heard. So I went and I watched and listened to this film. And indeed, it did have one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever to come from the pen of a British composer. The film itself featured a then young, unknown actor by the name of Anton Wall. The film was called Dangerous Moonlight, and the music was the Warsaw Concerto. I'm not going to play it, I just thought you'd like to know it. <laughs>
a bill touch in front of this, you better go far, you show, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's lovely, this. Lovely when we get back up the West End. Have you got to back up the West End tonight? Just as well, there's no trains running. <laughs> You know, it's, it's nice being in Soho. I was born and raised in Soho, you know. Lovely place, Soho. I was walking out being Dilly the other day. It's mainly funny, we like this, we stand on this hip. I said, I walked out being Dilly, hand on your hip, it's very bad, you know. He said, he's got his hand on his hip. I said, you have, he looked down, he said, blimey, I'm 12 holes of all pipe under there. You know? <laughs> I said, It's the after things that happen to you. You know, the other week I was working at the Cler Clergyman's Convention at the Royal Albert Hall. Clergyman's Convention. They're all there. And you know, they like the little drinkies, you know, the clergyman. Did you know that? They like the little drinkies, yes. And the, the three of them in the bar, not the bars at the Royal Albert Hall, there's the three of them. English priest, the English figure, the Irish priest, and the Jewish rabbi. And the figure said, you know, gentlemen, we said, we're not taking my collection, I take the money back to the vestry. And I put it onto the vestry table. And I spread it about. Take it lying down the centre, and half is for the good Lord up there, and the other half is for me. The large priest did this. He said, always got to do exactly the same thing, Vicar. He said, I take my collection just like you do, I take it back to my vestry just like you do. I put it on the vestry table exactly like you do, and I spread it about. And I take it lying down the centre just like you, and half is for the good Lord up there, and the other half is for me. The little rabbi listened to this in rapture. He said, you know, it's very funny. I do exactly the same things as you do. I collect my money just like you do. I take it back to my ossif just like you do. I put it onto my ossif table just like you do. Then I'm a little different. I don't spread it about. I make it the one great big pile. Then I'll froze it in here and I make money catches the ass. What goes to froze it? <laughs> oh, we haven't got a break, have we? Oh, we're okay, oh, we might, we can go then. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a time now we're going to creep into the finale of the show and we're all to say goodnight to you. And what better than to say with the boys and girls of the game? And you give them everything you wish to. It's your life.
Thank you. Still like to say you appreciate that wonderful orchestra, Don Sheridan. Yeah. Thank you. 